Hey, this is Andrew doing another Keyforge deck review for you. This one is called Gigacycle, the Giant Key Puncher. And uh, this is a deck that I, uh, I purchased from Greece, actually. Um, found it on, so I had a, a particular set of cards that I was really interested in. Started looking on decksofkeyforge.com to find that combination and found this for what I, well, a, a pretty reasonable price. It was sub $10. And got the combo I wanted. Um, I, interestingly, I took it to Chainbound uh, uh, Monday night and only went two-two with it. So uh, did not perform as well as I'd hoped it would. Um, but it was fun and interesting, and I think it can do better. Uh, I'll show you uh, what's in it, and then you can see if you think it was just a lot of piloting errors on my part. Uh, and I'll tell you, there's one particular card I will point out that. Uh, both times I lost was buried at the bottom of my deck. So, uh, yeah, that, that I think was definitely part of the situation. But, um, you know, and it's not, it's definitely not top, top tier, but uh, it is quite a good deck, as you'll see. Okay, so this is Gigacycle, the Giant Key Puncher. It is Untamed, Brobnar, and Shadows. And we'll start with Brobnar. So we have one two punch. Gain an amber, stun an enemy creature. If that creature was already stunned, destroy it instead. Uh, it's just good no matter how you cut it. Cower's End, destroy each undamaged creature, gain three chains. Good in a pinch, not my favorite card, but uh, if you need it, you need it. Drummer Knot, six power giant, play, fight, or reap. You return a friendly giant creature to your hand, and it does have its good friend, the Ganger Chieftain, who's a five power giant that says you may ready and fight with a neighboring creature. If you have both of these in your hand and your opponent has no creatures on the board, it's worth five amber. Uh, you play the drummer knot, you reap with it five times, uh, because each time you play the ganger chieftain, you the, the drummer knot readies and fights, but it can't fight, so it stays ready. Then you reap with it and return the ganger chieftain to your hand because of the drummer knot's play effect or reap effect. And then when you play the ganger chieftain, it readies the drummer knot again. You do that five times, the sixth time you play the Ganger Chieftain, ready the drum or not, and you can't do anything with it because of the rule of six. Um, and these are good with other cards that are in here too. So we have, we have a Gauntlet of Command, which is an artifact that exhausts to ready and fight with a friendly creature. That is fantastic. Uh, we have two copies of Groggins, who's an eight power giant that can only fight flint creatures. It can only attack flint creatures. Uh, so that is a restriction, although when you have a lot of ways to make it fight, um, you just kill everything, and everything's a flank creature. And that was mostly the case. Into the Fray is good for that, because it uh, you play it, and for the remainder of the turn, a friendly Brobner creature gains fight ready this creature. Uh, Grognans is a solid target for that. It can burn through anything elusive and do a lot of work before it finally dies. Uh, Lollop is also a good target for End of the Fray. Get a lot of fight out of him. Kill most things. Uh, and yeah, when you have End of the Fray, Elusive just doesn't seem like a huge problem, right? Because you just fight, burn the Elusive, ready it, and do it again up to six times because of the rule of six. Lollop is an 11 power giant. He's also a location. And he deals no damage when attacked. But when he's attacking, he does 11 damage, which is enough. Tremor says stun a creature and each of its neighbors. That pairs very well with the aforementioned one-two punch. You stun three creatures and then use the one-two punch to destroy one of them. Or stun a fourth creature if that's what you need. Flamethrower is an artifact that exhausts to deal one damage to a creature with one splash. And then lastly, we have Shard of Strength, which is a, an artifact, it's an item and a shard. And it exhausts to give a friendly creature plus one power counter for each friendly shard. And I will spoiler this and just tell you there is one other shard in here. Um, this is not the best shard by any means, but it's okay. It's fine. And uh, there are some creatures that are quite nice to make bigger. Some of my favorites, uh, Drummer Knot, uh, is very nice to make bigger because he does good work. Um, and there's even a Shadows card in here that I enjoyed making bigger as well as an untamed card. Oop, I dropped a card, so I'm going to grab that. Cool. I think I didn't cause too much disruption there. 
So yeah, Knuckles Bolton is a three power elf thief with elusive and skirmish. Nothing to write home about. I don't love him, but uh, making him bigger is actually pretty good. Having a large creature on your shadows turn with skirmish means you can do all your shadowsy things and also get a good fight in. So that is not bad to use as a target for the Shard of Strength. We have two copies of Ronnie. Uh, this is part of what I was looking for, just getting decks with, with Ronnie. <laughs> So Ronnie's a two power elf thief. After you play him, you steal one, but if your opponent has seven or more, you steal two instead. So that is quite good. Very, very good. Brend is a three power elf thief with skirmish. After you play Brend, your opponent steals an amber, uh, but when Brend is destroyed, you steal three. And uh, this I really like in decks with Ronnie because uh, if your opponent has a bunch of amber, let's say your opponent has six and you have these in your hand, you can play Brand, burst them to seven, and steal it back with Ronnie, uh, where you would have only stolen one. This lets you steal two. Um, it, it often works out pretty nicely to have those two cards together. Hideaway Hole. Uh, of course, the trick with Brand is how are you going to get it killed? Uh, there's not a lot of ways in here, although uh, Coward's End is definitely a way to do it. Hideaway Hole is an artifact with a bonus amber. It has Omni, you sacrifice it, and uh, creatures you control gain elusive until the start of your next turn. Merkins is a two power elf thief. Uh, after you play him, you choose a random card in your opponent's archives or the top card of your opponent's deck. Play that card as if it were yours. People forget about the first part. They're used to having cards played off their deck. Uh, they forget that you, uh, you can play cards from out of their archives, which can be quite good. Uh, I got unlucky with that on Monday night on the when I was playing this and uh, w was in a situation where I really needed a board wipe. I knew my opponent had Gateway. They had a card in their archives. I assumed they'd archived the Gateway. Uh, they had actually archived Arise, and um, I had nothing to Arise, so it was terrible. But I guess I denied them the use of it. But um, I would have rather do hit the Gateway. Skeleton Key is an artifact. It's an item. It exhausts to make a friendly creature capture an amber. Special, uh, and you know, by the way, Skeleton Key is very good with Brend. You capture stuff onto Brend, and you make your opponent need to kill the Brend. Uh, importantly, though, if they have no Amber, let's say they have no Amber and you have three on Brend, uh, the destroyed effect is going to happen before Brend leaves the table, so uh, they, they, you actually won't steal anything in that situation. They need to have it in the pool when Brend is destroyed for uh, you to steal it. Next, we have Special Delivery. It's an artifact with a bonus amber. Omni, sacrifice it. You deal three damage to a flank creature, and if this damage destroys that creature, you purge it. Uh, very nice. That is really good for uh, cards with strong play abilities or things you're worried your opponent might arise. Uh, yeah, really good for Ember Imps, things like that. Okay, and then we have too much to protect, which gives you a bonus amber, and then has you steal all but six of your opponent's amber. This is also really nice with the Brend, because uh, if your opponent already has six or more, uh, Brend bursts them up right before you play this and steal them all down anyway. If you happen to have Brend, too much to protect, and Ronnie in your hand, it's really nice, because you can, you can play the Brend, add one to them, steal them down to six, and then steal them down to five, and you're pretty happy at that point. How else can we steal? Well, we have Routine Job in here. Only two copies, which is not fantastic, but the second one is probably Stealing 2, which is quite good. Um, and those combined with the Too Much to Protect uh, automatically keep an opponent off a key. Uh, by the way, those two games that I lost, both games, Too Much to Protect was in the last four cards in my deck. So had some definite luck issues there. Although it's worth pointing out, uh, it is a luck issue. This deck doesn't have a lot of filtering or uh, extra draw or archives, so of course you're more susceptible to that. If you have a deck that has like Logos or sometimes Mars that has the ability to draw tons of cards or filter cards like this might give you the ability to do, then you have a much better chance at seeing the cards you need. So um, that is bad luck. It is also a weakness of the deck. Shard of Greed is an artifact that uh, is an item and a shard. It exhausts to give you an amber for each friendly shard. I didn't see this until the end of pretty much any game. 
as well. So that was kind of a bummer. Uh, all right, um, and th this is this is a very good chart. I mean, gain two or gain three, even gain one is a really impressive effect for an artifact. Okay, let's go to Untamed. We start off with Duskwitch, which I found out the other day, uh, the arc system counts Duskwitch as two expected amber. I disagree strongly with that. Uh, and it made me think at some point I probably need to do a video walking through like arc and maybe SAS and talking about some of the areas that I would just make different calls, which isn't to say those systems are terrible by any means or even bad. Um, I think they're very nice and I appreciate the work people have put into them, but um, it's an area where I definitely disagree. I think calling Duskwitch to expected Amber is crazy because your opponent will almost always kill it. Uh, now maybe you still count that as an advantage to you because you're forcing them to do something, but uh, <laughs> it's almost always either zero Amber or a crap ton of Amber. Uh, just depending on whether they kill it or not. If they don't kill it, it's probably worth a lot more than two. Maybe it's two on average, but I just don't think you can depend on it in a game where your opponent has a competitive deck. Okay. Anyway, Dusk Witch, one power human witch with Omega Elusive, and it says your creatures enter play ready. So you, when you play it, you end your turn, which is why it's, um, you know, it rarely actually takes effects because your opponent has a whole turn to deal with it. It is elusive, that gives it a shot, but if they have any direct damage, it's toast. Full Moon, uh, very nice here. Uh, for the remainder of your turn, gain one Amber each time you play a creature. That is very nice, especially if a lot of creatures, which this one does in Untamed. Uh, we have two Marmo Swarms, which are two power beasts that get plus one power for each Amber in your pool. Makes them big for a while. It's always funny when you go to Forge and have to remember your Marmo Swarm dies. Persistence Hunting gives you a bonus amber, you choose a house, and you exhaust each enemy creature of the chosen house. In my experience, it was typically the case that my opponent had one house dominant on the board, and so uh, that ended up being very useful. Uh, two copies of Rusnar, that's the artifact control here, most of the artifact control in this deck. Uh, it's a four power beast and insect. Uh, after it fights, you destroy an artifact, and if that artifact had an amber bonus, you gain that much amber. Uh, I had an opponent surprised by that. They said, oh, you get an amber bonus? And well, that's because usually uh, people end up targeting the, the biggest threats on the board, which are tend to not have amber bonuses. But yeah, if you destroy an artifact with an amber bonus, you get the amber. Sometimes it's even advantageous to destroy your own if you're just not worried about your opponent's artifacts or you think they help you. You might destroy one of your own with amber just to get that extra bonus. Depends on the situation. Uh, and then we also have a little more artifact control in the form of Grasping Vines, which gives you a bonus amber and uh, then returns up to three artifacts to their owner's hands. Pretty good. Uh, Nature's Call, also really good board control. Gain an amber, return up to three creatures to their owner's hands. Um, having both of these in your hand really gives you a shot at taking control of the board. Um, following up with a Persistence Hunting for the whatever you left on the board is really fantastic. Uh, great targets for a nature's call here would be um, not any of the untamed stuff unless maybe you have full moon in play. Um, but the, the Ronnies are very good targets. The Merkins is a good target. Brend is not. Uh, probably. Uh, the Ganger Chieftain could be Drummer or not, maybe, but really you're looking for the, the Ronnies and the Merkins as good targets for the nature's call in this deck. Then we have Pan Packajaga, which is a three power beast with skirmish and creatures to the left of it on the battle line gain skirmish. Uh, that with the bro I had I had a turn where I had this uh, Dusk Witch and Brobnar uh, and and went went a Brobnar turn and it was it, you know that my opponent couldn't come back from that. That's a an amazing turn. So this is really solid. Um, high priority, I think, for the opponent to kill, which makes it a good target. Okay, so we've actually, we have two more cards to cover, but really quick, I want to swing back to the Shard of Strength and say the Shard of Strength, we, I mentioned it being good to hit Drum or not, it's also really good to hit um, the Dusk Witch, because that gives it some survivability. It's also really good 
to hit the Rust Nars because that will increase your artifact controllability. They're more likely to survive. And it's also really good to put on the Pan Package Aga because that gives it some survivability and it's giving you a lot of benefit. So a lot of really good targets for the Shard of Strength. Even though it's not the most amazing shard, it, it has some good applications in this deck. Uh, lastly, two, two more cards. We have Way of the Porcupine, which is an upgrade with a bonus amber. Uh, it gives a creature hazardous three. Um, the, one of the best uses I thought of for this is to throw it on an opponent's creature and then use Brand the next turn. Um, the timing on that didn't work out very well, and so I ended up not getting to actually do something cool like that. But there is, there is a... And the one time I could have really done it, I misplayed by putting it on the wrong creature, and I really am trying to hold myself to the standard of doing things quote-unquote right, so I didn't move it. Um, even though my opponent probably would have let me, um, and nothing had changed, I just didn't even ask because I really wanted to practice uh, what I would expect in a, in a tournament play. So um, anyway, there is th this does have a good application in killing your own Bren, potentially. Um, it also can protect one of your own good creatures if you need it to, so uh, good, good potential there. And then lastly, we have World Tree, which is an artifact that exhausts to return a creature from your discard pile to the top of your deck. What are some good targets for that? Well, uh, Ronnie. So you can see this has multiple ways to get to recur Ronnie between the Nature's Call and the World Tree, plus having two of them. So that is pretty cool. Um, it's also, if you have to use it on something else, like the, the uh, Dusk Witch is good, or the, the Drummer Knot or Ganger Chieftain are good World Tree targets, if that's what you're thinking on your next turn. Um, that, so yeah, that's pretty cool with... The Ronnie's, I, I was excited to see that. Um, the really probably one of the hardest cards to make work in here is the Brend, um, because there's no built-in way to kill it. You really have to do something like the the Coward's End, which is going to have a lot bigger impact, but maybe right, uh, or like throw away the Porcupine, which means you can't kill the Brend until your next turn. But um, could work. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Like I said, um, it only went 2-2, which I feel like was probably a real piloting uh, shortage on my part, as well as um, potentially having something to do with, with little bad, uh, bad draw luck and the deck not having any way to mitigate bad draw luck. So that's that. That's Giga Cycle, the giant key puncher. I really enjoyed playing it. I hope you enjoyed walking through it with me, and uh, happy forging.